This is John Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today I have another exciting episode for you. I'm here in Irvine, California on a field trip at the Orange County Great Park. And we're at the uh, Great Park Orange County Farm and Food Lab. And whenever I come to Orange County, I like to visit the uh, Orange County Great Park and check out the Farm and Food Lab because they got so many different things growing and they're constantly bringing in new technologies as a demonstration garden to show you guys what you guys can do at home. They also have classes and do education here to teach you guys how to grow food. Uh, I encourage you guys, if you live anywhere in the Orange County, even LA area or San Diego, uh, come and check this garden out. It's open 10 to three every day, awesome place. Uh, what we're gonna check out today are some of the new things uh, that have shown up since I've last been here. So, uh, and some old things too that I haven't really covered too much in some of my past videos at the Orange County Great Park. Be sure to check my past videos for the Orange County Great Park where I talk about some of the other things about uh, you know the farm and food lab they have growing on here. Uh, today we're going to cover mainly three things, some Aspelier style fruit trees that you can grow pretty much anywhere including your front yard. We're going to talk about some of these guys over here, uh, some vertical container gardens that uh, minimize the amount of space but maximize the amount of plants you can grow. And also the thing I'm most excited about is uh, what's over there. They got a self-contained aquaponics system running off the sun. So uh, first, let's check out some Aspelier trees. The first thing I want to show you guys today are some Aspelier trees. Now, Aspelier, I think that's a fancy French word, and I don't exactly know what it means. So if you know what it means, hey, post it down below. But whatever it means, it means like uh, growing a flat plane, like uh, two-dimensional instead of three-dimensional. So if we look down, you can see down this whole living fence, this, all these uh, trees are planted in a single plane. They're not like spreading out all three dimensions. They do this for a very important reason. Number one, the tree will take up less space. So they're judiciously training these guys and you can see the little, uh, you know, uh, plant tape they're using to tie these up and they tie it every few inches because they want these trees to grow in a certain fashion along the plane. Anything that like shoots out a direction they don't want, they'll just actually clip back and then they'll encourage the growth in the direction they want. Uh, one day they'll have this full and each basically, uh, wire will be full of a, a tree and then just like this one this one's coming out it's coming out really far about you know five feet and uh once this starts to bloom and fruit you know there could literally be a fruit hanging every few inches along this whole line so what this does this will save you space also some aspire style trees can be more productive than even a large tree because you're growing in a smaller area and because the tree is smaller it doesn't have to feed all of its massive, you know, trunks, limbs, and leaves, and they can actually live longer. That being said, they are a little bit more labor intensive because you do need to constantly keep up with, you know, clipping back the uh, branches you don't want, to, you know, to keep them trained where you want the tree to grow. So, especially in small tight spaces, when you don't have, you know, acreage to grow a lot of fruit trees, Aspaye style, may be a really good thing to do to grow some fruit trees on your property. Another benefit, if you orient, orient them right in the right location, you can actually grow Aspelier style trees and vegetables in a raised bed down below. So let me show you guys uh, an example of that next. Next, I wanna show you guys how you can grow a fruit tree in a raised bed garden and still grow vegetables. So the sun's over in this direction and you can see the uh, fruit trees right here and it's just all one line in the back straight. And you can see this amazing garden up in front, including collard greens and some leeks and some herbs down below. And you know, because this is like, you know, in a single plane and not branching over the whole thing, it still allows light to penetrate so that you can grow some uh, vegetables down below. So I think this is a very good system to grow some fruit trees. And you can see here, this one's got a whole bunch of apples on it, uh, ready to be harvested really soon. So the last thing I want to share with you about the Aspaillet, and here's yet another Aspaillet example, just going against the standard hurricane fencing here, is that certain fruit trees are more conducive to being Aspaillet than others. Hey, is that a word, Aspaillet? Have you ever been Aspaillet, like against the wall? Uh, but so certain fruit trees are better than others. So things like the stone fruits tend to work fairly well for this, and also things like apples and pears. Uh, so maybe some of the other tropical trees may not work so well and I haven't necessarily uh, seen that done. So before you want to ask Bellier one of your trees, uh, do a Google search and make sure it's 
one of the ones that'll work well with the Aspelier style of growing. Now we're gonna look at a new system that they didn't have here at the Orange County Great Park uh, that I showed before on other videos when I was in Florida. This is a system they use in Florida a lot. Uh, this is basically a styrofoam uh, containers that holds uh, the soil or the planting medium. Uh, I would consider this like a soilless mix. Uh, it's mostly coconut core, maybe with some other organic matter in there. But for the most part, you could see that, I mean, they're growing four peppers per container. So that's uh, four, eight, 12, 16, 20. Hey, I went to college for something. Uh, 20 peppers, and you could see, I mean, this thing is completely loaded up. I mean, what if you could take literally like one square foot of space, grow vertically, and grow 20 peppers like this? So how this is watered is they top water this down, the water and the fertilizer goes down through all these and then drains into the bottom uh, container here and check it out. They got some humongous beets growing down in the bottom. So you can see this system is yielding pretty good and once again they're uh, putting in a water fertilizer mixture and it's a fairly high nutrient so that they'll get this kind of growth uh, because there's not a lot of soil in there because you know plants need the soil to hold their roots but also for the nutrition in the soil that they will extract out if there's things like rock dust and mycorrhiza and good organic matter in your soil that'll feed your plants because they're using a soilless system here they got to actually add in the fertilizer to make the plants absorb it so that it can yield this much what I'm going to show you guys next is another system they have actually another tower system where they're more relying on the soil and the nutrients in the soil instead of actually uh, feeding nutrients to the plants. This is another uh, tower growing system that they're using and actually this one has a lot more planting spots. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Instead, the other one actually had only four spots. Now this one relies more on the soil and more organic nutrition in the soil to feed the plants. And the reason for this is number one, they're actually a lot larger. Uh, I also like this material better. This is made out of a plastic and the other one's a styrofoam. Styrofoam, in my opinion, is very bad for the environment. Um, I like this system a lot better, and uh, they're basically got a drip system on here, so this basically waters all by drip. So an example of just one of the containers is right here, and uh, all these containers are just stacked up and uh, on top of each other to make all the different planting spots. So for example, in this one system here, there's uh, six, 12, uh, 18, <laughs> I gotta use my math today. 24, 30, 36. All right, went to high school for something. So we got 36 planting positions on these strawberries, and it's, I mean, it's only like uh, four feet tall. So you can really grow a lot of things. Say you have a patio on your, you know, apartment, on your uh, deck outside. You could grow in just, actually, this takes more space. This probably takes about four square feet of space to grow. 36 plants and this is what the system looks like if you want more information on this you want to go to uh, agrotower.com So I uh, definitely like this a lot This is nice and heavy-duty and will probably last you many years to come to grow your food now to grow something in these systems I'd probably stick to growing something like strawberries or herbs or maybe some lettuce You don't want to grow things that are gonna suck too much nutrition out of the soil unless you're constantly feeding it uh, with some nutrient solutions so definitely if you want to grow vertically in a tower system this is the system that i currently recommend and hopefully one of these days i'll have one on my show to show you guys how they work specifically and how to set it up so the last thing i want to show you guys today is a thing that i'm most excited about it's a self-contained solar powered aquaponic system so i've seen an actually aquaponic system in a in a raised bed garden actually at a community garden before and it was a small system and appeared to work pretty good but this system looks like they got it pretty much dialed in and this is completely running on batteries. So you could literally live out in the middle of a forest as long as you're getting good sun and uh, have an aquaponic system like this, be able to harvest your own fish and actually harvest your vegetables too. So what I wanna show you guys next is actually how they got this system set up. The first part of this uh, aquaponic system, it starts with the solar panels up top. They have two Carocera and Carocera knives are fairly good ceramic knives, but maybe they make better solar panels. They got two 130 watt solar panels up top that actually uh, have the wiring that go down below into this big box here that I can't really show you guys. And inside this locked box here, they have all the batteries. So all the batteries store the electricity from the sun so that the pumps can continue to work. Uh, once they store the electricity during the day, the pumps are constantly running. And you can see down below here is a, uh, is a pump. And this is actually called the Marine Land Pump. They probably use these for uh, boating and whatnot. 
and uh, this pump actually just uh, goes inside the tank to pump the water up to the aquaponics bed up top. Moving around further here, you can see they got a little uh, grate here so that we don't lose the fish and the fish don't jump out. We could lift this up and if you look very closely down in there, you could see some tilapia in there. In addition, here's some of the drainage after the water is pumped in from this reservoir because the fishes are pooping in there and peeing and that basically makes a nutrient rich solution that then they actually pump up to the top and then it goes through the hydroton and the plant's roots which absorb the nutrition that the uh, from the poop and the pee of the fish and then the plants absorb all that nutrition and check it out in this little garden here we got some little lettuces that look really amazing we got even a tomato plant some cabbages uh, some parsley and some other herbs growing and it all looks like it's doing amazing so I definitely think this is the future of aquaponics to be able to do it anywhere without using electricity. Uh, one of the inputs they need to use here is actually some kind of fish food. You could grow your own duckweed or use some commercial uh, fish food to feed your fish so that they can poop out that rich fertilizer. Now another thing I want to talk about is you know they're literally using fish waste as the fertilizer to feed the plants up top and oh I want to mention also they're using the uh, hydroton balls which is often used in the aquaponics and these are here just to hold the roots in place because they are uh, you know basically an inert uh, substance you can also use something like rocks but the hydroton is uh, generally sterile so that's usually used more than just some rocks out of a field or something like that so you guys can be weirded out and not eat some stuff grown on fish pee and fish poo like your lettuces I mean uh, many people use uh, manures cow manures or chick manures or turkey manure in their garden all the time and don't think twice but what about using human manure and human pee or urine to feed your plants now I'm not at the stage where I'm gonna put my own uh, number two stuff on my plants but I think urine is a great addition uh, can be a great addition to your plants to add nitrogen uh, to your garden and I'll have an upcoming episode about that really soon but I think that's a, definitely a good way to use your pee instead of flushing it down the toilet in some uh, clean purified water to get rid of it. So this solar powered self-contained aquaponic system here is in the prototype stage. They have been getting uh, better and better and hopefully soon they'll have the uh, smaller version that they'll be offering to the public. Uh, a local company here is actually uh, designed and are building these actually uh, just off site here close to the Great Park. So I've had a lot of fun here at the Orange County Great Park and the last thing I want to show you guys really fast is you know what you can grow a tree literally anywhere. Let's check it out staying in between uh, two orange trees here and these are literally in half wine barrels and as you can see this guy is actually quite productive. So no matter where you live you could grow a tree and you got to make sure you got the right variety. Dwarf tree they're gonna do best in a small container because a root system won't get so big and they could even yield good fruit for you and especially if you're in a place where you want to grow a citrus tree and it freezes outside you can actually leave it outside in the summertime and pull it inside for the winter so it doesn't freeze its kajibis off in any case i hope you guys enjoy this episode uh, learning more about some of the new technologies they have growing on at the orange county great park uh, once again my name is john kohler with growingyourgreens.com we'll see you next time and remember keep on growing